through the glass. And it, if you put a little bit of that in a, a, a wax uh, wetting agent and then put it in the red hot mercury, it will turn to gold. It's called philosopher's stone. And that's the time when uh, Kelly and Dee were learning the Ophana Minokian language. And that alphabet is the symmetry we're about to discuss. Golden Dawn, the movie Stargate was formed around that. The Boheme, also Bon Po, those alphabets, um, which is how you flame, fuse, plasma. The Bon Po initiation is, can you make a flame with your mind? And the sequence by which you vision that, you assemble these donuts called plasma residue, the shadows of which is the origin of the sacred alphabet in your mind, your optical cortex, and you're shaping the angle of the plasma. If you do the right sequence, they create implosive fusion called flame or a bonfire. From the bon pole, we'll show the pictures. And so Kelly indeed did that whole Ophanum Enochian thing we're going to talk about. And then uh, John D. wrote letters to Queen Elizabeth. He signed them for your eyes only, two circles, and then a symbol for her eyeglasses, which was later misread as 007. And that's the, origin, the true origin of the 007 story is John D., who was the Einstein of his day. He taught the same hypercube physics I'm about to show you and conversed with the angels, the Ophanum and Enochian, Enochian physics. You can look it up. And anyway, so they were doing this gold making at Rudolph's palace in Prague in the rose there, and the magnetic lines were pent, conjugated. And Queen Elizabeth got very jealous, and she sent her cleverest spy, a guy named Francis Garland. And VincentBridges.com, who is my teacher for this story, has elaborate historical proof that Francis Garland, well documented in John D.'s notes, is a, a pen name for another guy named William Shakespeare. Elaborate academic evidence. And so Shakespeare is sent off to Prague to learn the physics of alchemy from D. and Kelly. And returns and, and gets the angle of perception right to teach the psychology of fusion, the alchemy, the psychology of alchemy, how many can become one, plasma fusion, in his plays. Open the door and close the door in the right sequence of angles on the right sequence of emotions, and then you can feel everyone's feelings at once, e pluribus unum, and you suddenly feel everyone as if they are you. And that's the electrical design of the Shakespearean theater, which was designed by John Dee, by the way. And the sequence of the angles of the opening and closing doors are about consumed perspective and phase angles, basically. Anyway, at that time, and that's basically the play, Mids, uh, Midsummer Night's Dream, where you had the opposite, opposing lovers, fear, anger. Um, anyway, then uh, they realized that this nutcase Philip was about to destroy everything in Europe that wasn't Catholic, and they had one year's notice. So they designed this storm called the Tempest, and the way they did it was they gathered the rabbis on the five hills in Prague and the, the Enochian, their golden dawn physics, on the seven hills, long story five, seven, but the hills of Prague are rightly set up, and they did what's called the Ophanium Enochian, the Ophanic Calls which is basically you do the sequence of symmetry operations of the high order alphabets called Ophanum Enochian. And you call plasma storms the size of stars. And I have been present when um, we did this Ophanum Enochian invocations in Red Rocks and in North Carolina and seen storms the size of continents called. Um, this is important instructional physics in my view because this is one of the ways we survive the solar wind, the big tornado coming. So I think it's useful to tell this story. Uh, Vincent is selling the screenplay right now, it's called Young Will in Hollywood, and we think it's much better than Da Vinci Code and teaches better physics. But the point was that where the storm that came from that took out the Spanish Armada is impossible meteorologically. The North Sea Orient origins of that storm has never happened before or since in history. How did that storm get there? So exquisitely timed. The Spanish people are still living on the English coast today where they got stranded by that storm. And they took one year and they planned that storm. 
So you, can, you too can steer a tornado, and it's a series of symmetry operations. So I will, uh, I'll show you now just a little bit about that alphabet. We, we wanted to talk about higher and lower order alphabets today anyway. Um, so this is sort of starting at the top end instead of the bottom end, but it's OK. Um, this guy, uh, Kelly, was clairvoyant, John B's assistant. And he was a trickster. He's the guy that sold the boy to me, by the way. Very tall. He's a tall one, so it's a story. Um, by the way, we have two DVDs here about this, which Valerie will tell you. One was Vincent Ridley, one was myself, on the origins of alchemy and the origins of opane and opium. So um, John B., who spoke most of the languages of the planet on his, in his day and had the largest library practically on Earth at that time, uh, said, you know, it's boring over here, and I'd really like to talk to the angels, you know? And so this Ophanum angel knocked on his window and handed him this green stone, which is still in the British Museum, suggests you feel it, and uh, Vincent did. And when you get somebody with a decent amount of clairvoyance, you see the plasma residues, the shadows of the electric field, in that stone, which is the name for origins of alphabet. John McGovern called them plasma residues. It's a good name. And the arrangement of those electric fields, the charge fields in that donut, if you look at the symmetry, the way they're nested in there is called a hypercube, which is the physics that uh, John Dee was famous for internationally as a mathematician at that time. And the arrangement of those, if you see how a hypercube could exist, you have six around one making seven. There's six around one, seven outside, and five inside. And if you approach electric fields from those face angles correctly, it does this. And I'll show you in a minute. That, those letters, Ophane and Enochia, in addition to becoming the alphabet Greek and Cherokee, became the alphabet used in the movie Stargate. You see why that's the alphabet used in the movie Stargate, the sequence of symmetries? Compression algorithm, uh, compression to acceleration. Here's the origins of Greek from Ophanum. And the table of those letters, if you read them converted to our letters, called Tablet of Nalbaj, you read Zabiel, Zabiel, Tunael, Raphael, Haniel, Mikael, Gabriel. The names of angels are just a sequence of symmetry operations to embed your plasma in a larger hypercube interstellar plasma body. Pardon? Zachiel. 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 Raphael. Haniel. Mikael. Gabriel. Now this, you really should look at the, there's a lot of details about this. Goldenmean.info slash Ophanum. And later, you'll see when we tell our little fairy tale of origins of DNA, it's about EB versus Uru. EB is bird, Ophanum, 